Pixie Lot and all about tonight. BBC Radio 1. Ricky Gervais is my special surprise guest today. Kind of half surprised though. Well, I knew about it. I knew about it as well. I was, I was wondering, and go, what's this? <laughs> you go, you're on a, you're on Greg Dettler De- applause. Hey, like this is your life. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing here? Yeah. So um, we were just talking about Idiot Abroad. Oh, what honestly. What a triumph. I, mean, I this, can't it's, wait. The thing was, though, when, when you described it on the first episode, it's pretty much just a, it's a, it's an excuse for you to send Carl away to do stuff. But actually, it's it's so popular and worked so well. Well, this is the thing. I said, I said, Carl, I said, um, uh, it got the highest rated show on Sky and on its channel in the US. <laughs> and I told Carl that and he went, well, that's bad. He said, it's called an idiot abroad. He said, so wherever I go now, everyone knows I'm an idiot. <laughs> he didn't want to. He thought all the way round it was called Carl Pilton's Seven Wonders, and we changed the title when he was away in Peru. So he genuinely didn't know. Yeah, no. And we we had we had a photo shoot. We told him it was for Sky Magazine, and that was the billboards. And oh, so he came back no. to see these billboards. Like I spent about two million pounds on these huge billboards <laughs> everywhere with Carl's head and an idiot abroad. He said. My mum said she couldn't find it because she was looking for the wrong thing. And it's that one. She went, oh, an idiot abroad. What had you uh, called it? What was the fake name? Um, uh, Carl Pilkington's Seven Wonders. Oh, um, wow. And then he thought this one was going to be called Carl Pilkington the Bucket List. But <laughs> it's called an idiot abroad how too. Fall for it again? I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't know. We had to lie to him. Um, it, it, it's him choosing things to do before you die from a big list. Mm. And whatever he chose, we had uh, a little trick up our sleeve. So he chose swimming with dolphins. He went all the way to Australia, and when he got there, it was sharks. <laughs> it was incredible. The whole series. I mean, my, I think my favourite was when he was in the Dead Sea. Oh, and and he, and he thought he sees someone's gauze. Yeah, he went, oh, in, in his water. belly button. Yeah, his, his gauze. Oh, he's amazing. Um, but it, he's he's got into this weird um, netherworld now, where whatever I do, whatever I come up with to wind him up, right. He does it because he doesn't want to give me the satisfaction of failing. So he's doing things he hates and that terrify him because it's being filmed because he doesn't want to say. He doesn't want me to go around <laughs> saying he failed. <laughs> so he's just doing everything I want. It's uh, really weird. And he's amazing. I, I, the, the things he's done and seen, incredible. he should thank me. But well, he doesn't. But he does, phones I mean, me up angry every that's day. That's the thing. Does he care about the stuff he's seen? Is he taking photographic evidence of all the beautiful wonders that he's seeing or not? Well, he, uh, he went off-road a little bit. I'm annoyed at him. He's in Africa. He's meant to be doing safari. He's actually going to see a mountain gorilla, which he's terrified of. I Today? Said, That's happening at the moment? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um... <laughs> I said, it'd be like David Attenborough. Be, he went, yeah, but <laughs> he said it didn't rip David out of his arm off. He said, that's what's going to happen to me. He said, it's Pilkerton luck. The gorilla's going to come over to me. <laughs> and I've, I've, so I said, you've got to do it nude, because um, <laughs> I, uh, I said clothes spook gorillas a little bit. He's going, no, no. <laughs> but it's so, uh, honestly, he's so funny. I still call him every day, wherever he is, mm. and, uh, and uh, get the get the low down. Um, but it's also so honest and refreshing as a as a you know a documentary a, a travel documentary or whatever because he's got no filter yeah. he says what he thinks at the time you know and um, I, I, there's nothing quite like it and he hasn't got a pretentious bone in his body there's no malice he gets on with everyone in the world I I, I, I joking aside I mean he's my best mate and I can't get enough of him. I think he's amazing. Um, but um, get him out of his comfort zone, and you, you've really got TV gold. The best thing about it is that there's people that, that always say, with Carl, they always, they're all cynics, and they go, oh, he's a character. Yeah. He's all set up, he's all scripted. Yeah. But in this, you can just tell that it's not. Imagine scripting this. Imagine scripting, oh, we need an old Indian fella that can wrap his knob round a stick. Brilliant. Yeah, I got one. As if it's scripted. Really? I mean, don't be ridiculous. Why would we... Uh, yeah. If, if, he's, if he's fake, he keeps it up 24-7. Even when he's alone <laughs> with his girlfriend, he keeps up this amazing image. Um, no, he, he's, he's honestly not fake. And people are saying it's bullying. It's exploitation, mm. then. The, the people who know he's not fake think I'm exploiting him. Not at all. And, and it, well, of course not. He's in on it, you know. He, he, know, he mm. knows he's making good TV, and there's nothing he can do about it. And uh, I told him this. I said, Carl, a lot of people think I bully you. He went, well, what are they doing about it? <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect, isn't it? Oh, by the way, that Indian guy's on my show next week as a surprise guest. <laughs> is it really? Friday, it yeah. doesn't quite work on radio, though, does it? <laughs> you just fine. hear a sort of a squeak and a clunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, on Twitter at the moment, you would quite like to get... I want to get it trending. A trending Carl topic. Pilkington has a head like a f- like orange. A, like an orange. You know what to write. Okay. Let's get it out there.
So, Carl Pilkington has a head like an orange. A f- orange. We can, if you hashtag it, <laughs> yeah, then exactly. we can get that as a, a trending topic. <laughs> exactly. And it's what Twitter was made for. This is it. So Making Carl's life slightly more miserable. Is he on Twitter? <laughs> He's not, no, but I'll make sure he knows about it. Any plans to get you on Twitter? Uh, um, I was on for about... 10 minutes yeah. I couldn't quite get the hang of it that was my that was my stupidity though I mean I just think I'm too verbose I can't do anything in 140 characters okay. like my blog is like an essay yeah. I, I start sitting down and go what have I done today and I end up writing it so uh, no maybe I'll return to it one day but um, okay. but I don't need to because you can tweet for me well there you go thank you so for now it's hashtag Carl Pilkington has a head like uh, an orange yeah. on Twitter and we can get exactly. that trending topic at the moment things that are trending are A-levels um, Big Brother and Fright Night. Oh, so good. I think we can get a well, I can see why Big Brother's trending. Mm, did you watch it last night? Yeah, we've put in our uh, the greatest people in our society into the one room together. I it was fascinating. <laughs> yeah, a brave new world. If they could breed, we'd have a, a whole new human race mm. that could save us. Who was your particular favourite from last night? Uh, um, well, I think there's seven people who I didn't know, I think. <laughs> They were my favourite. It's more of a journey of discovery. The people I had really. to keep turning my girlfriend, going, "Who's that?" You know, I think he was seen in his underpants once. Who's that? She took her clothes off. All right. Who's that? I don't know. She's a brother of someone who took their clothes off. Mm. But um, yeah, I did watch it. Yeah, I'll probably get into it. I watched the show afterwards, and you can always um, gauge a good TV show when the only person clapping into the ad break is the floor manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always a good sign, isn't it? Um, so before you go, let's just talk about Spy Kids. Quickly. Yes. Now, you're you're a talking dog. I am. This is a new direction um, for you here. It is, yeah. I'm not the star of the film. The star of the film is the dog. Um, so, uh, yeah, and there's a lovely story behind it, actually. It's a scruffy little mutt. It's a little robotic dog, and um, I, I voice him. Um, um, but in real life, in real life, that dog was going to be put down. <laughs> And we saved it and made him a film star. Oh, nice. What a lovely story. And and you're the voice of the dog. I'm the voice, yeah. If dogs could speak, I wouldn't have a job. Now, we have got some clips of this, but like many things that like you just described, the Indian guy, doesn't work quite work on radio because it just sounds like you. That sounded racist. Hello, children. I am a spy. This is a prank. This is not a prank. The dog is talking. Well, it's not the sort of thing you'd miss, is it, really? A small, handsome dog talking. So the thing is, that is just you yeah, doing lines Yeah, that's just the... me talking. Mm. When you can't actually see it's a dog talking, the special effects, that was quite a pointless clip, but well, I don't I've got care. one more for you. We saved... Oh, go on. to watch you, kids, but not watch you die. We're gonna do something! What do you want me to do? I'm a lover, not a fighter. Brilliant. The voice of Ricky Gervais on the radio, <laughs> like there was just a minute before that clip and after. Perfect. For all yeah. people know, might know now listening, that you are dressed like a dog anyway, so deliver the lines I again. Exactly, yeah. Do the lines again. Again, it doesn't quite work. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Oh my God, the dog's here. Brilliant. It's, it's weird. Shut your eyes. It could be the film. Go on, do it again. I'm a lover, not a fighter. It's Brilliant. Your eyes are shut. Superb. I'm a chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. But anyway, good film, though, Spy Kids. It's for, uh, for kids, mm. yeah. You know, I, I, I doubt that you'll go, don't go by yourself. You'll get some funny looks. Why not? <laughs> well, unless you've got a child. I don't have a child. I've got a well, niece no. and a nephew. Take them. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, do that then. <laughs> and tell them if they don't go, yeah. we are going to have the dog put down. Okay. All right. That's not true. Okay. That's not true. Is that true or not true? <laughs> it's not true. Okay. It's also what I told Warwick Davis if he doesn't act well. Well, you put him down? Yeah, take him oh. to the vet. Yeah. And have him neutered. I'm having, I'm having Warwick. They're coming off. <laughs> Say goodbye. We got you a BAFTA, though. <laughs> How about that? Well, that's it. Let's, let's oh, check what's going on. Your producer's giving me filthy looks. Well, it's okay. I just must quickly apologise for the uh, reference to the Indian man's part earlier. If you're offended, we apologise. What's his nationality got to do with it? No, I'm just talking Racist. about his... Uh, <laughs> Talking about his, his bits. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the Twitter's going well over here. Good. I'm glad something is. Mm. <laughs> the, ha- the, t- the hashtag is Carl Pilkington has a head Quick, like an orange. Play Pixie Lot again. <laughs> uh, how about the Wombats? If, if we can't save us, surely Pixie Lot can. <laughs> I can't play it again. Do you want to play it again? Why you not? Like it? You did yesterday. Wombats are perfect disease. On Radio 1, and Ricky Gervais is here. It's going well on Twitter, looks like. Is it? People are going for it. They're Good. retweeting. Yeah. Yeah, so hashtag Carl Pilkington has a head like an orange. 
retweet that, and we can get it as a trending topic. Yeah. Does he look at Twitter? No. He doesn't no. look at anything. Really? No. He must uh, read sort of reviews and stuff. No, no, doesn't look at anything. No, it doesn't doesn't watch the news. Uh, he just doesn't uh, watch the news. No, he doesn't. Well, watch in case they talk about him. No, he said there's no point. He said he said if there's something terrible, I'll be said I'll find out. He said it's just bad news, so I just want to know. Doesn't want to know anything. He's got. I think that's a. I think that's quite a good attitude, really. Mm. Well, if if you know if you're at war, someone will knock on the door and say. You're at war. Get your boots on. <laughs> Get your boots on, yeah. 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 Here's a hat. <laughs> That's another thing that annoys him. Why army boots have 16 holes. He says you can't do anything in a rush. He, th <laughs> he thinks they should use Velcro <laughs> in the army. The siren goes off. He said, you know, he doesn't even... He ties his laces once when he gets a pair of two trainers and then they're like slip-ons. He oh, just yeah. kicks them up. Yeah. That's that because he can't be bothered. He says life's too short to oh another plug, yeah. um to actually tie laces up all the time. He's amazing. He's, he's an like, amazing man. He's a bit like sort of Wallace and Gromit in the opening bit where he rolls down the stairs. Exactly. And into yeah. His shoes. He's very much like Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. yeah. Both of them fused. Is there a machine that puts his trousers on for him? Uh, yeah. I'd, well, once his, his his girlfriend was away working and she had to leave instructions for him to ha how to eat a quiche. And he couldn't be bothered, and she came home to find him sticking um, sausages in a toaster. The smoke was coming out. He thought it was quicker what? than grilling it. Yeah, and he, he was didn't just, really do that. He was yeah. He was just about to put in a fork, and she went no like that, <laughs> panicking. I mean, he's he's amazing. He's an amazing character. Um, so yeah, um, idiot abroad, uh, end of September. Wonderful, and, and life's too short as well. You announced a couple more special guests. So Liam Neeson, Helena, Bo Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah, uh, we've just put a live page um, uh, about two hours ago on RickyGervais.com. So go there and um, uh, and there's like videos and behind the scenes, and I'll, I'll post up um, how that's going right up to um, uh, broadcast, which is um, October. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in, Ricky Gervais. My everybody. pleasure. Thank you. Hey, we've got Stephen Merchant in in a couple of weeks' time. Excellent. His next one. What's he plugging? All the same stuff? Uh, some of the same stuff. Brilliant. And I think his... Two hits his, for one. stand-up tour. Yeah, excellent. Well, let's not talk about that. Can we, when... I, don't, I don't get a percentage of that. Really? No. You're not Actually, even doing I the voiceover? I think I do. I think I... Because, uh, yeah, when I first met him, I made him sign over 50% of his wages forever. <laughs> Just like I did with Steve Carell. <laughs> so he's in Life to Short as well? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Uh, that's excruciating as well. Okay. I, m uh, my big mouth gets me into trouble. Can you imagine that? <laughs> mm, unbelievable. And also, happy birthday for The Office. Ten years, isn't it? Ten years. Wow. That's it. Thank you. Good night, everybody.